Does throwing shows like sh- stress you out? Oh yeah, like it it can be very very stressful. Like you know when I first like like as a teenager, in a sense it was less stressful, but it was only less stressful because I in a sense I want to say I took it less serious. But it's funny as fuck because like when I took it less serious, I feel like that's when like my best work was like produce you know what i'm saying but now taking it serious making sure i have certain guidelines that i follow and if i don't meet these guidelines it can get it can become stressful just because all right if this guideline isn't met then this is going to slow down the show and i've gotten to the point where i i have meetings i I have meetings before my shows and I, i have meetings with the community and the meetings with everybody that's involved with the show just so that way everybody knows that you all are playing an important part at this show you feel me this is the mars files powered by 1am radio um it's your boy mars three times and today i have eli hawkins yes sir and who do you have beside you t ali Ali. Yeah. All right. Um. So we've known each other for kind of like a long time now. Um, yes, sir. We actually did an interview before, but it never came out. <laughs> yeah. Like the 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 legendary, the rare uh, CD yeah, Creative District interview yes. that never came out. <laughs> yes, that w- that was a crazy ass interview. That that night itself was wild as fuck, bro. Like it was so much shit going on that night. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, um. So yeah, I mean, I kind of just want want you to like, I guess start with the creative district stuff. Like, how did how did all that happen, and what was that? Okay, so as far as like creative district, it was an event me and my team X Lace put together, and we put this event together when we were like we started the event started off at sixteen, and then four years in while we was twenty, like it took a whole huge like growth, and it started. The concept of the event was to create a platform for South Florida artists, not just performance artists, but visual artists as well, and just create a stage where everybody could come together and link up work and talent can be showcased. And yeah, that's like pretty much how like it started. And um, the first event was in Fort Lauderdale. And then with the event being in Fort Lauderdale, we had like around 100 to like 200 people show up. And then that's when we was like, oh shit, like this is like pretty lit. So we ran it back. And the first event, we didn't even have a headliner. Like it was just mad. We had uh, Ja Ja Ra from uh, the Misfits. Yeah, you know? and the Nobodies. The Nobodies, yeah, the Nobodies. And then um, that was like I, I think he was headlining the first one, and then the second one we had a uh, young Simi and Cashy headline, and I think for the second one we brought out like 400 to 500 people, and that's when we knew like you know this is something like serious, and we just gotta like keep pushing it and just keep growing with the event. So we ended up doing the third one, and the third one we booked Puya, Wi-Fi Funeral, and Rob Banks, and that shit like we had over 1,300 people, and that really put us like on the map as far as like South Florida because around this time like Wi-Fi Funeral he wasn't really a huge artist but we caught him right before like Dopey and T signed him and like he just like took off because he had he he had a he had like three singles out that was popping within a city but like the concert really pushed it to the next level and also um (laughs) Rob Banks he had a I don't know you remember but he had put out like a tweet where he was like what the fuck is CD3 because like we had met with him on like a boat and we agreed for him to like perform at the show but I guess like he had forgot or some shit but regardless he ended up still pulling up to the show still performing still turning up and this shit but him just acting like what the fuck is CD3 I guess he forgot like what we had a conversation about it just really took the event to like a whole nother level because everybody was like what like y'all booked this man but he doesn't know the name of the event when like we actually met with him like at a yacht and talked about the event i just i don't know why the fuck like he would tweet that but regardless he he still pulled up show love performed and the event was sold out it was so fucking sold out that we had the entire like lula v at the time like packed like from like streets the whole entire block and one would yeah um, so, so it was basically just something that you guys started in high school and, like, 
I mean, how did y'all all like meet and shit? Oh man, so like it started off with my bro Saeed, and it started off with my bro Saeed, the creator of X Lace. He met um my two best friends Ice and Jaheem, and at first we was a shoe group. That's where you get the name like X Lace from, cause like mm. a shoelace, you know got what I'm you, saying? Got you. So like it started off as a shoe group, but um eventually like we were he puts it we were all creatives in our own right you know what i'm saying so like we eventually started throwing shows so one we can create a platform for artists in south florida but also create a platform for ourselves as well because like i don't want to say nobody was really taking us serious but it was just at the time it was only i can say like two real platforms that was really putting on for creatives at the time in south florida and you know we were young as fuck so we just wasn't really getting like no recognition you know what i'm saying so we decided to put this shit out ourselves and start start within ourselves you know so just having a group of like teenagers that one were like all friends and we were like creatives but come together to be like you know what nobody wants to give us a platform we're going to create our own platform and not just create a platform for ourselves create a platform for all the artists in south florida as well you know what i'm saying so you know, it just really started off with nobody giving us a chance, and we was like, we're going to do it ourselves. Word. And then, I mean, I guess fast fast forwarding a little, like, I mean, x is is it even, like, a thing anymore? Yeah, it's still a family, and we still are, like, friends. It's just everybody has their own individual brands from, like, me having my own brand, Eli Hawkins Sounds, Saeed having Frozen Saeed. Kanji having Kanji to the Nicole ZZ having Nicole ZZ Studios. It's just more so of like we took all the lessons that we learned and we've just decided to like push our own brand until we're all established in our own right to come back together and then like really take X Lace and the creative district name to a whole nother level. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. So I guess I guess my next question is as of right now, like what what exactly is it that you're doing? Right now, with Eli Hawkins Sounds, you know, I'm still throwing shows in the city, still bringing, like, dope upcoming talent to the city. Um, We're about to start the agency. With the agency, we have a few artists that signed to us, and we have a few producers, a few videographers, and a few creative directors that signed to us. And we're really going to, like, start touring more out of, like, South Florida and creating an opportunity for artists in South Florida to perform in California, Austin, New York. And that's really what we have set up for, like, the tour and the artist that's, like, signed to our agency. And T.I. Lee is, like, one of the first artists that signed to, like, our agency. So we're just going to really focus on her her artist development and pushing her as a creative and focusing on her album as well. I mean, how do you, how do you decide on, like, who you want to sign or... Oh, my God, it's so hard because it's a lot of bullshit out here but for me it's really more so on energy and word ethic and like your integrity like your morals thing that that you stand for like shit that you're gonna do behind the scenes that nobody's really gonna see you know what i'm saying and you the word ethic has to be there because there's a lot of people like i've managed artists in the past and there's a lot of artists that like say they want it but they don't really want it you feel what i'm saying i really find myself like being a father and like having to do most of the work for artists when like they're not even on yet you feel what i'm saying so like you know with the agency we're taking the route where i'm gonna be releasing music as well we have a team of different producers a team of different artists and a team of different like managers that's just going to be pushing everybody and holding everybody accountable to their work ethic you know what i'm saying when did you decide that you wanted to start making music oh man honestly like i got inspired like just being inspired it's honestly started like i would say like probably like a few months ago i was in the studio and um because i started working for a uh, strong arm img and um working doing i'm marketing rep for for their label and they have a lot of dope talent as well coming out of south florida so just being around strong arm and img like i showed one of the producers like a song that i recorded and he was like, bro, like, you got this. Like, like you need to be releasing music because you're a star in your own right. Like, and, like, for me, like, I've, I'm have i big on the music business. Like, my whole thing, like, I, I worked for Matt Studios, interned for a lot of, one of, the, I think I interned for every most popping studio in South Florida. And just, like, interning there, I really wanted to learn the music business because I seen artists 
you know, they want to make music, but they get fucked over with labels, deals, and they just, they're just not patient, you know what I'm saying? And me, it's more so of like a marathon and like a, a long race, so I, I wanted to take the approach of like learning it, so just vibing with one of the producers there, and I played one of my songs, and he was just like, yo, bro, like, you, you gotta make music, because my brother, he's a producer as well, and my brother, like, he always tells me I need to make music as well, but, like, I only really fucks with his beats. So, you know, we recorded a song, and I played it for one of the producers, and then one of the producers was like, yo, bro, like, this is a vibe. And he was like, look at you, Brad. Like, like you like you throw events, you throw shows, you know the bu- business. Like, why wouldn't you want to make music? You know, you, put, you create a platform for all these artists. You might as well, like, put yourself on a platform just so that way, like, worst comes to worst, like, you're still a star in your own right, even when it's said and done. Yeah. And that's, like, the vibe that I'm on, you know? And I have the resources. I nearly can record at any studio I want for free just because I've helped so many artists and so many, like, studios out and where I built my leverage to the point where it's like they just fuck with me for who I am, you know what I'm saying? So... You know, it just makes sense, and I'm inspired. It's definitely being around T.I. Lee, like, I'm inspired. Like, her energy's lit. The music that she's making is fire. And, like, when we link, like, it's just pure great energy, and it's, it's just inspirational, you know? You don't think it, it, like, becomes almost like a conflict of interest with you, like, managing artists or, like, doing things, like, in, in that in that right like mm-hmm. you don't think it becomes a conflict of interest when you want to make music too well because at it, that point it's like who becomes priority <laughs> that's a fact um but the way how we have it set up is like i said earlier we have a team of different managers a team of different um event production we have an event production crew so even though i may set up the play or i may have all the resources i have a whole team of different managers that can do what i can do or even do it better to the point where it's like all right like this manager is going to focus on ti lee this manager is going to focus on eli hawkins or this manager is going to focus on mozart or this manager is going to focus on any of the artists that's that's on the label you feel what i'm saying so it really doesn't become a conflict of interest just because the ultimate goal is to put everybody that's a part of the collective on that way we can be all stars in our own right you feel yeah what but I'm who 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 becomes priority like right now for example right now who's priority who's I would number say one as right now priority is really more so of like the collective just getting the collective name out there and then once we start the tour that we're going to get on then we're going to focus on ti lee's album um after after the tour and then around, like, I guess we could say, hypothetically speaking, like, October, we'll probably focus Make on, like, sure you dropping, a, dropping an album for, for myself. But it's just more so of making sure the collective yeah. is, like, put on. Like, That's don't, you what, think, don't you think, like, like we'll just use, like, ASAP Rocky or, or Tyler Creator as an example. Like, they, they were, like, the, the breakouts. Mm-hmm. You know, they were the breakout stars, and then the collective became a thing. Like, even with Brockhampton, like, Kevin Abstract was the breakout and then, like, maybe he didn't break as, as hard as he did with, like, the whole thing. But, like, mm-hmm. obviously, like, there's, there's like, a, a center. You know what I mean? Has that, has, that even been, has that even been a conversation yet? Has that even been figured out? Because you need one person to go for everybody yeah. else to, to go. Off. Yeah, no, nah, that's definitely a fact. And I feel like, as of now, like, how we, how we setting up the collective tape is to be where everybody shines out and then, like, we let the fans pick, you know what I'm saying? And like whatever the fans gravitate to, then that's what we're really gonna we're gonna we're gonna push towards and we're gonna continue to we're gonna listen to the fans, bro. Okay, to the audience. Cause that's like really the the biggest fact. So like as of me, like I've always been a businessman from the start and I've always had a love for like music. So like with me, I never have a problem being behind the scenes because I've been behind the scenes for a majority of my career, you know what I'm saying? But as far as like taking a step as an artist, I'm inspired and I'm a creative in my own right. So of course I want to create, you know what I'm saying? But when it comes to the collective, it's more so of choosing what the fans want and depending on how the fans gravitate to, whatever they gravitate to, we're going to push towards it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, 100%. It makes perfect sense. Um, <clears throat> so I want to talk about the shows and stuff for okay. a second. Because, I mean, obviously you did the stuff with x and shit. Mm-hmm. But, like, yeah, now you are kind of, like, stepping out and, like, doing your own shows. And, I mean, you've, sure. been, you've been doing your own shows 
mind you, but I, I mean, I've just been from the outside looking in because I'm in mm-hmm. LA. I, I have seen that you you brought out Little Keed. Mm-hmm. Who else? Who else? Little you Keed, Splurge. Uh, we brought Take Money to LA. Um, who else? Glock Nine. Um, Black Fortune. Um, who else? Who else has it been, bro? I think that's pretty. Oh, Danny Towers. Um, when, you're, when you're when you're like when you're booking a show, what's the thought process? Oh man, I, I, the thought process goes into like the season, like what's 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 people feeling right now? What's the atmosphere? Like, what what are people listening to? Like me, I'm big on doing research. Like, I spend hours on Instagram looking at comments. I was on Instagram and YouTube just paying attention to people's comments, paying attention to what people are saying, just so I make sure that okay, if this is what the the bros energy is on this is what they're gravitating to all right let's take my approach on it and let's mix it with the audience you know what i'm saying because i'm just really big on catering to my demographic like i know you see at times i go on my instagram story and i always ask the fans who who do they want me to bring you know what i'm saying just because when booking shows and throwing concerts is such a risk bro but if you if you if you move strategically and you move with a game plan then like it kind of makes the risk less of a risk, but it's still a risk. So it just makes it more like calculated. You know what I'm saying? If I have like 10, 20 people telling me like, yo, you should bring this artist. I'm like, okay, then like, I know this artist is going to pop. I know this artist is going to do well at the show. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it is really more strategically and just catering to like the fans and the audience and just making sure I deliver what they want you know because ultimately like they are the support system they are the ones that's feeding that's feeding the brand that's that's bringing the traffic to the brand you know what i'm saying yeah 100 percent. does does throwing shows like stress you out oh yeah like it it can be very very stressful like you know when i first like like as a teenager in a sense it was less stressful but it was only less stressful because I, in a sense, I want to say I took it less serious, but it's funny as fuck because, like, when I took it less serious, I feel like that's when, like, my best work was, like, produced. You know what I'm saying? But now taking it serious, making sure I have certain guidelines that I follow, and if I don't meet these guidelines, it can get, it can become stressful just because all right, if this guideline isn't met, then this is going to slow down the show. And I've gotten to the point where I cr- I have meetings. I-, I have meetings before my shows, and I-, I have meetings with the community and the meetings with everybody that's involved with the show just so that way everybody knows that you all are playing an important part at this show. You feel me? Not just from me putting together the show, but from the DJ, the stage manager, the person that's doing interviews, like the artists. Like what I try to do is I I I make sure all the artists send me their sets before they perform. Like a week in advance just because I know like all right, I can kind of picture how I'm going to have you perform and what set time you're going to perform at. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, is it I mean, how do you how do you so so like for example like my biggest problem is I don't like trust anybody to do anything, like, because oh I I know because I can't sometimes I can't even trust myself to get stuff done you know so how am I gonna put my trust in somebody else like how do you decide who to work with? It's, it's a risk. It's a risk, bro. All of it is a risk, but I know like you say that so calmly. Yeah, because I've just gotten so comfortable with taking risks like. Um, let's talk about the CDV situation. Like, you know, when we booked Young Thug and like Famous Dex, I was under a contract where I didn't really have as much control as I would like, but it was a risk. And I know if I took this risk, it could put me and my team in a better position. It could put everybody, my family in a better position. So it was just a risk that I was willing to take. Unfortunately, the risk didn't work out as planned. What ended up, like, what happened with that? Bro, I'm still in a case with Young Thug. <laughs> no way. Yes. Like, like two years on. Like, imagine paying a lawyer for, like, two years. Still to this day. What's the case? I can't really speak on it. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. 
Do you still bump bro's music? Yes, I'm a st- I'm still a huge <laughs> Doug fan. Slime, what the fuck? I booked Little Key. Like, I had to like, and it's it's honestly not really on Doug. It's more so of the agency that we went through. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to put the agency yeah, yeah, on blast. Yeah, yeah. Not to say too much. Yeah, because you know. Yeah. But it, it's it's not really even like Doug Fall. It's just more so of his his management and his agency. You know, if his management and his agency would have had things together. And I feel like they really underestimated the event because when we were, when I was speaking to them and I was explaining to them in the show, I was like, yeah, bro, like we have over 70 visual artists and we have up to 10 local artists performing in like South Florida. You know, they were more so like, all right, so like who else is going to be on the bill? Like you're renting this big ass venue because we, we booked out Man of Winwood. Yeah. So they're like, you're booking this big ass venue. Like what's like, what's what's the connect? Like, like how, how's this going to work? So I think, you know, from the jump, they didn't really truly understand, like, they didn't really truly understand the idea, you know what I'm saying? And most people truly don't understand your idea. That's why you have to take a risk on being innovative, you feel me? Because you're doing something that's not really being done before, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, like, that situation itself was a risk, but the opportunity that I got out of it was a blessing. Like, I ended up, um, we had a I Heart Radio um, sponsoring the event, and 103.5 The Beat sponsoring the event. And even though the event didn't go as well, um, Papa Keith, he still saw my work ethic. He still, he loved the way how I moved. So he gave me a job opportunity to work with him in the station. And now that's what I'm currently doing. And like, that's, that's a blessing and it's right. Like I learned so much. I get to go to like different events. Like they got me into live for the first time. I've never been to fucking live. And when I was in live, like it was dope. I had a VIP section, like even though the performance that I was performing, I wasn't a fan of their music, but just still being in that, being in that a, environment. Right, yeah, that environment was a blessing. And I know you could kind of like, you know, feel the same way. Cause even like the situation with like 1am, you know, like it's, it's all a blessing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I just took it for a blessing. I just really had to be like optimistic. Um, I'm not going to hold you. I was depressed for a long time. Like when it first happened, I, I, I stayed out in London for like a month. And I just stayed out in London just to get my head, my head clear. But like coming back, what really made me come back was the opportunity that PK and my boy um, Mar- Marcano Sachs, who was um, working for PK at the time, he gave me like he 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 just ali ooped the opportunity. So just coming back home to an opportunity like that, like it made it made all the bullshit worth it, bro. And yeah. it made me like it was a lesson, and it made me like move more strategically with my shit you know what i'm saying yeah definitely so i mean what's the plan moving forward uh the plan is the agency working on this compilation tape right now the compilation tape and the tour so like right now we got the compilation tape getting ready to come out um it's going to feature ti lee of course and uh-huh. a few other dope talented artists from south florida that i've just built relationship with from like throwing shows and events and then right after that we're going to go on tour and we're going to do a nine city tour that's gonna be like for the for the first tour, and then possibly after summer we might run it. We might run a, a, a West Coast leg of the tour as well. But um, right now for the summer it's just mostly focused on the tour. You know what I'm saying? Word. Um, is I, I guess is there anything that we're missing? Like anything that you specifically want to say? I want to talk about T T Ali, bro. Okay. Because like her talent is crazy. The music that she's putting out, her worth ethic, her performance, it's it's on a whole another level. So how did you guys meet? Oh, man, we really met. At um the Drip or Drown event that I threw recently, I threw like a house party. Well, I mean, not I mean, tell them, tell them how, tell them how I even got on that though. All right, so whoa, so I have I had threw a video. I made a like with all my events. I throw I, I create a, a promo video for the event, and I was like, all right, everybody like tag who I should have on the lineup. So within hours of like people uh, putting the video out, when I say like over a hundred people were like tagging her. Everybody was like just tagging her, tagging her, tagging her, tagging her, and I was like, "Yo, like, what the fuck?" Like, I was like, "Yo, who is this? Like, what the fuck is going on?" You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, like, at first, you know, like, I, I'll see something like popping up, like, all right, I make a note in my mind to go like check out the artist. But then it was the next day, and then it was another day, and then it was another day, and there's still people going ham, like her fan base, her audience, just like 
tagging tagging her, making sure that and people DMing me too, like, yo, bro, you gotta have this artist. This artist is like lit. And she was um she's she was at she was thinking, she's from South Florida, but she moved to like Houston. So like she has like uh Austin bro. Uh, well, Austin, my fuck. Be uh, Austin, Austin, be like, Texas, fuck? yeah. <laughs> but like a, a Austin a Austin fan base. So having people from Austin hit me up, I was like, okay, let me listen to her music. It's to music, and I was like, "Yo, this shit is is, is, is different. Like, 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 it's lit, and it's, it's it fits the time that's going on, but it's still different. It's still dope in its own right. So, you know, we hit her up, told her about the show, and we had a performance. She won the contest, you know, and like, it was really no competition at the point because when I say like, yeah, there were a lot of artists that had over a hundred or two hundred tags, but when I say she had like thousands. Like, it was just thousands, and her support system was just really strong. So, that was that. And then I had her perform at the show. And when I say she had the best performance, like, she had the best performance, stood out out of everybody. Everybody throughout the night, like, yo, this artist is lit. Everybody's telling me, like, yo, bro, like, she's lit, she's lit. And then when we, when we, when it was time to set up for the show, she was the only artist that came and actually helped me out. And that goes back to what I say when it comes to like artists I'm working with, like their integrity, things, their morals, what do they stand for? She was there, she helped me set up, like she didn't have to do that, you know what I'm saying? And she was just more so like willing to work. And I saw something within her. And then like right after, I told her like right after the show, we got set up a meeting, we set a meeting and now we here and now we about to take off. We about to work on her album and we about to set up the toy. Fact. Word, word. So um, I guess if somebody's never heard your music, like how would you describe your sound? Honestly, my sound is like mixed with the pop star slash trap star type of vibe. You know what I'm saying? Cause I know the streets and I know my my boys. They they in the streets and they all of that. But since a youngin', I've been like on the pop star type stuff. You know what I'm saying? I grew up listening to Michael Jackson and you know Chris Brown, MC Hammer, all of those people. So I kind of mixed the two together and just came up with a nice vibe that nobody else has. And it's just unique and people they fuck with it. You know what I'm saying? It's only honestly a blessing that. God bless me with this talent to where I'm just creative all around and I can make any type of genre of music. But you know what I'm saying? Right now, I'm just really focused on, you know, just lit type of music, more of, a, um, again, the pop star street type of music. And, you know, we're just trying to spread it out and get it as much as possible. Do you feel like, like maybe like you're, maybe you're, I don't know how to, I'm trying to frame this the right way. Um, Do you feel like, because when when I hear you say things like you're like going for like a pop star sound or like a trap sound or whatever, it almost sounds like like you're chasing a sound. Do you feel like that affects your music, or is that just how you how you make music? It's just how it comes out. That's the best way I could describe it. You know what I'm saying? When I go into the studio, I don't have a certain sound. I just have to master. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what people focus on. They focus on a certain sound, and if the sound doesn't come out that way, because they're so scared of being different, they just oh you know what I'm saying? They trash the song. Exactly. Me. I go in the studio, I'm, I'm all based off of vibes. I don't write my music. But what I do, I tell the, the engineer, okay, play the beat for me real quick. He'll play it for like five, seven minutes, maybe ten minutes. I'll write like a verse out and go in the booth and knock it out in like ten minutes. I'll freestyle it just based on the vibe in the room, you know what I'm saying? Based on the beat. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a certain way, but that's the best way I could describe it, like the pop star, you know, trap star type of vibe, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, if somebody's never heard your music, what's the first song they should listen to? Definitely Celine. Celine. <laughs> Celine. Celine is a hit. Definitely Celine. Celine is you know a what fucking saying? hit. That song, you know what I'm saying? It's something your mama could listen to, your aunt, you can shake your out grandma. To that shit. <laughs> grandma, all that shit, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Celine is definitely one of those where I was like, okay, like, I'm starting to find, kind of find my sound now because I was just testing a bunch of stuff out, like, young as fuck, ain't know what the hell I was doing. I was going in the booth making hits, but this song was like, okay, this is the. This the 2019 song. This is the song that's going to get me noticed. And right now, we're working towards that. Um, also, check out Next Up. This one of my singles I just dropped. That's one song you could definitely get lit to. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. And it's on Apple Music, Spotify, all that? Uh, Celine is on all platforms, definitely. Uh, Next Up, we're working on getting it on all platforms uh, currently. So it definitely will be soon. Okay. And, um, I mean, I guess where can people find you guys at? Uh, you can follow me at Eli Hawkins with two S's at the end on Instagram. And on Twitter, you can follow me at underscore Eli Hawkins. And then as far as, like, any updates on my shows and my events, you can check out my website, EliHawkins.Sounds. Um, you 
Uh, definitely follow me on Instagram at 43 underscore T Ali. It's T E A L Y. Uh, follow me on Twitter at 4300 Ali underscore. And then might as well just add me on Snapchat at T Brazy underscore three. Also, check me out on SoundCloud at T Ali 4300. And we lit. Bet, bet. Uh, you guys got any shout outs or anything before we wrap it? One shout out South Florida. Shout out everybody that's killing it. Um, shout out the whole fam at X Lace. Shout out. Everybody that's just on a fucking grind, and if you fucking working, you got a dream, just stick through that shit. You feel right. what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Definitely, um, shout out Broward, Miami Day, you know what I'm saying? All the South Florida, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we definitely coming up, definitely trying to put the hood on the map, so definitely shout out to them. Uh, shout out Austin, Texas as well. Y'all always showing love, you know what I'm saying? Shout out 4300, shout out SBG, shout out VGE, definitely, you know what I'm saying? Um, and just shout out to everybody that's coming up, all of the artists that are coming up right now, you know what I'm saying? Just focus on yourself. Don't let anybody tell you what to do or how to live your life. At the end of the, at the, end of the day, this is your life. This is your world. Just, you know what I'm saying? Make smart decisions and just rule the world, you know what I'm saying? Bet. I appreciate you guys for coming by. Appreciate sure. you, bro. This is the Mars Files. Kim, Kim, Kim.